Welcome to Through the Firewall, conversations with Force 3 about the changing world of IT and network security. Welcome to episode 11 of Through the Firewall. Uh, I'm Martin Thompson, and I'm here today with Phil Page, uh, security sales engineer for Force 3. How are you today, Phil? Good morning. How are you doing? Great. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about how Tenable's ACAS can help defense agencies handle vulnerabilities on their networks. Uh, I guess let's get right into it. So, Phil, what are the most prevalent vulnerabilities facing a Department of Defense enterprise networks today? Well, I think one of the biggest problems that we're seeing across the board is legacy systems. You know, old operating systems, old equipment that may be just due to, you know, inability to replace it, whether it's due to applications that can't run on newer systems or just budgetary constraints, lack of personnel, are still running on these networks. And we saw a couple years ago, right, the Navy had to sign a massive deal with Microsoft to continue support for Windows XP. Now, a lot of DoD agencies are slowly transitioning from Windows 7, Windows Vista to Windows 10, but we're still not quite near where we need to be. They're lagging behind, I'd say, a lot of the civilian agencies and a lot of the private sector. So can you give us some examples then of recent vulnerabilities that have been exploited in the public sector? Sure. Now, it's not the United States, but one of the most you know imminent examples I can think of recently is the WannaCry ransomware that hit the NIH system in the UK. Uh, took down a majority of their you know, national hospitals there, caused a massive headache for all the public health authorities there in the UK. Uh, and we see, you know, also it affected hospital systems in the United States. The federal government more broadly, including the DOD, but also civilian agencies, has quite a large healthcare footprint, whether it's processing medical transactions, whether it's actually providing healthcare through VA hospitals or military hospitals. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of these other hosp- or a lot of these systems run similar legacy systems to these hospitals in the UK and the United States that were attacked. Uh, you know, there's a lot of crossover there. So I think it's a very uh, large concern among a lot of administrators, both, you know, in the public and the private sector. So what are the frameworks currently in place to uh, address vulnerabilities in patching? So the two biggest frameworks that we've seen in the DoD and the civilian side are DISASTIG, which everybody's familiar with, and actually NIST CRM is becoming a lot bigger in the DoD space, specifically for managing vulnerabilities. Um, you know, DISASTIG was mostly concerned about you know, benchmarking uh, products for you know, how they should be configured, uh, whereas the NIST you know, CRM is actually about its total organizational framework. It's about how are we going to manage our vulnerabilities, how are we going to remediate them. Now, some of these are already in place in the DoD, but I've noticed a lot more agencies adopting components of the NIST CRM to help improve their vulnerability remediation programs. So what are the challenges in this? Well, I think first and foremost, it's maintaining an inventory of the equipment you have on your system and then determining you know, what's vulnerable, what patches are out there to fix it, and then actually taking action to remediate that. And, you know, and that's tough to do in any environment, whether it's a small, you know, a small agency or a small business in the private sector or a massive enterprise. So in your own words, then, why is vulnerability scanning so important? So that's kind of the foundation of you know, what I just talked about, right? So if you don't know what's running on your network and you don't know what vulnerabilities are, run, are on those systems or how they're configured, you don't know how to fix it. You don't know how to minimize your exposure, you know, how to control this risk. So I, I think that vulnerability scanning really has a place there in automating the discovery of all these different aspects for security administrators. Uh, so tell us, how does the DoD currently handle vulnerability scanning? So a couple of years ago, the DoD started up a program called the Assured Compliance Assessment Solution, or ACAS for people who aren't familiar with what the acronym means. And due to this, they partnered with a local company called Tenable. Cool. So can you take us a little bit more in depth about uh, ACAS and what it means for DoD agencies looking to secure their networks? Yeah, so ACAS is really just an enterprise license agreement that enables DoD agencies and military units to get access to Tenable's catalog, several products in their catalog, and then use them on their networks without having to worry about going through product acquisition. Um, so it really streamlines the process of deploying this types of, these types of scanners out to the network. And what are the different components in ACAS? So ACAS consists of three main products. The first is Security Center which is sort of a management server or a management console for the other products in, in the offering. And it's where you create your scans. It's where you create 
you know, repositories for reporting and other things like that. And it also has a you know, fairly robust API that other applications can use. Uh, we talked in a previous episode about how Cisco Identity Services Engine can actually integrate with Security Center in order to pull reporting statistics and perform changes on a network. The second product is Nessus, which, again, a lot of people are familiar with, uh, you know, over the years. In fact, it was one of the first products that Tenable released, and it's what they're probably most known for. And Nessus is the actual scanning agent. So you can deploy multiple Nessus scanners throughout a network, even air gap networks. And they can perform a scan against different computers and different servers on the network. And they collect results. You know, and they can do, it can do credentialed scans. For example, I can actually log into a server and perform a scan locally to check how it's configured. And you can also do you know, non-privileged scans where it can just look at what's running on the outside and attempt to determine if there's vulnerabilities running just from looking at it. Finally, there's Passive Vulnerability Scanner. Passive Vulnerability Scanner, I don't want to call it an intrusion detection system, but it's fairly similar in the way it works. It typically, it hangs off of a tap port or a span port on a switch, and it will intercept network traffic that's sent to it, and it'll actually look at it to see if there's any vulnerabilities in the traffic that's being sent back and forth. Um, so again, it's a nice tool to use in an environment where maybe you can't perform active scans. People might be worried about how you know, the applications or the appliances in the network might work. PVS is a good alternative there. So three different products. Uh, how do they work together? Why should you use them together? How do they complement each other? Well, again, Security Center is the centralized management solution for all these products. So in that regard, you know, you, you can really obviously makes it a lot easier if you're using Security Center because you can manage multiple different Nessus scanners and PVS scanners. Um, so I think that that really is, is the power of Security Center is this centralized management solution uh, versus having to log into all these different Nessus scanners and pull results individually. It also gives you a much more robust view of your network when you run your reports. So instead of just reporting on one network segment, now I can run a report for my entire network or part of my network if I'd like to. How have we seen this solution used by security professionals? Yeah, I mean, earlier on in, in the discussion, we talked about, you know, these compliance frameworks and these risk management frameworks. And, and really, you know, first and foremost, obviously, it's meeting those organizational objectives. But more than that, it's actually a very useful tool for benchmarking your own environment and making sure everything is configured properly. It'll actually allow you to audit the configurations of devices and make sure they're compliant with whatever you set up on them. So... To that end, it's actually very, very powerful for people before they get hit with a CCRI or any other sort of cybersecurity inspection to make sure that all their systems are configured according to the regulations and according to their own organization's framework for controlling and mitigating vulnerabilities. So you touched on this a little bit, but it seems like a pretty uh, core component, uh, a compliance, DISA compliance. Can you talk a little bit more about how ACAS can help agencies meet that compliance? Absolutely. So again, we talked a little bit before about credentialed scans and how you know, it can actually log into a device and, and query the configuration of the device, whether that's a Cisco switch or a Linux server, or if it's going to use WMI credentials to log into a Windows server. And so to that end, it actually allows us to run an audit report to see how everything is configured relative to a certain benchmark that we've established. Uh, and to that, you know, that's very powerful for people that are trying to audit an environment, but also people that are trying to make sure that their environment is configured properly when they're about to get audited. Um, and of course, the big picture is that obviously all of these frameworks were put in place to try to mitigate vulnerabilities, mitigate the attack surface or you know, bad guys to get into a network. So the, more, the easier it is to adhere to these frameworks, the more secure an organization is going to be. What would you say are the most powerful parts of using these three different products in tandem? I think the biggest advantage that we gain is having a centralized point for auditing, for vulnerability, scanning, for all of that type of stuff, right? Instead of having to run a number of disparate different scans across your network, and now everything's managed centrally. All the reporting is managed centrally. All the configuration for the scans is managed centrally. You know, so it, it, it reduces the workload on information assurance and information security staff and allows a smaller number of people to do more. So I think that that really, again, reducing the workload, anybody is going to be excited when their workload gets reduced. And I think that that's where this line of products, Tenable Solutions, really come in handy. So does Tenable have any other solutions that will integrate with ACAS? Absolutely. First and foremost, they have a great endpoint solution called Nessus Agent. And it's very similar to Nessus Scanner, except that it actually runs on the endpoint itself. So the nice thing about this is that if I have an endpoint that maybe it's hard to get to, right, maybe it's air-gapped, 
or maybe I don't want to go deploying a Nessus scanner on a network statement just because honestly, you know, I don't have the resources to deploy one there. The Nessus agent is a fantastic way to make sure that all of your endpoints that are running on a network can have can be scanned for compliance, you know, for vulnerabilities without necessarily having to rely upon the, ne the Nessus network scanner. And so the second solution is Tenable.io, which actually is going to replace Security Center eventually. But right now, it's mainly used as a uh, web application scanner from the cloud. Now, it's undergoing FedRAMP approval. However, for those organizations that can get exceptions to FedRAMP approval or, you know, that obviously don't need this classified network access to GovCloud, you can scan your public-facing web servers right from this cloud-managed console. So you don't have to worry about having an on-premise server like you do with Security Center. Now, they are planning to port this to an on-premise appliance sometime soon. Uh, so for those of you that do need something that's on-premise, of course, that'll be an option as well here in the near future. How can DOD agencies gain access to ACAS? Yeah, so you basically just go to the DISA website. All the instructions are right there on how you can actually get granted the licenses and then download the software and deploy it. They even have really helpful documentation to help you configure the products. They have a fully staffed help desk that you can call that'll allow you to, you know, talk with experts to make sure you're rolling out the product in a correct way and that you're getting the most out of it. So could you tell us a little bit about how ACAS is already being used by agencies? Yeah, really the, the main power of it is that it allows you to centralize your benchmarking of all your different systems. And of course, this also means that you can then audit all your different systems. You know, whereas before, maybe you had to ask different people to pull configurations and send them to you, or you had to log into the systems yourself and maybe run a script. Now it's all handled automatically from one central point. Yeah, so it really reduces not only the red tape involved with trying to get an audit of a system done, and as, as you benchmark the configuration as well, but it, again, it reduces the workload on the administrator. So at the end of the day, information assurance and information security teams don't have to run around trying to get a hold of 20 different people to make sure they're getting the information they need. And on top of that, you can produce really nice reports, everything from sea level reports all the way down to technical reports, that everybody at all levels of the organization can get the information they need to make sure that they're staying well informed of any problems with the systems, any major vulnerabilities that have been detected, and how the systems are as a whole when it comes to compliance. Okay, and where should agencies go if they're looking for more information on ACAS? Tenable put together a great website that has a lot of information and a lot of documentation on the ACAS solution. It's called Ask ACAS, and you can find a link to it under the description below. It has a lot of information on how to get in touch with the help desk, how to configure the product, and how to make sure you're getting the most out of it. It also talks about Tenable's other solutions and how they can help you in your environment if you're already running ACAS. So a lot of good information on there for people that are already running ACAS or who are interested in running ACAS. I definitely recommend everybody check it out. All right. Well, Phil, thanks so much for talking to us today. All right. Thank you, Martin. We've been talking with Phil Page, security sales engineer for Force 3, and this is Through the Firewall. This has been Through the Firewall with Force 3. Force 3.